Good day, students. Uh, this morning we are going to be revising all that we have done for the term. Uh, the following topics will be revised. We have equations with fractions, we have factorizations. Factorization is factorization one. Under that, we are going to be looking at common factors. And then we are going to be looking at the uh, third topic, substitution. Now, to begin with, we have equation with fractions. Now, what is an equation? An equation is a mathematical statement of that tells us that two variables are what? The same. Either two variables or what? Two quantities are what? The same. Now, what is a fraction? A fraction is a part of a whole. That means, for example, if I have a complete cycle and I decide to divide this, let's say, into four, and perhaps I decide to shade one part of the cycle, the part that is shaded is the same as what? One over four. Now, this same one cycle has been divided into what? Four different parts. Now, the combination of all of these parts will give us what? a whole will give us the complete word cycle back. So and that's why we define a fraction as part of what a whole. Now when we're talking about equations involving word fractions, we have examples of we have let's say x over 8 is equal to what 2. This is an equation because what it is divided into two parts the left hand side and what the right hand side. Now for this to be called an equation. What that means is that what is on the left hand side of the equation is the same with what is on the wall, right hand side of the equation. Mathematically, when you take a view at what is on the board, they may not look the same, but when you solve it, you now understand that it is truly what an equation. Now, if x, x of course is a number, that's the use of letter to represent what a number. Whatever that number is, if that number is divided by 8, the result is equal to 2. So what will be that number? We can solve for it. Now, the way to go about it is this. On the left hand side, we have a fraction. On the right hand side, we have just ordinary words, whole number. We first balance both sides so that we now have what? Therefore, we have x over 8 is equal to what? 2 over what? 1. Now it is balanced. Now, now there are two ways to solve for the values uh, for the value of x. The first method is we can cross multiply. So I'll cross multiply. When we cross multiply, what happens is the, de the denominator on the left hand side multiplies the denominator on the right hand side. So that we have what? x multiplied by what? 1 equal to, and then on the right hand side we have also what? We have the denominator to multiply what? The denominator on the left hand side. So that we have what? 2 multiplied by what? 8. And then when x multiplies 1, the result is still x because 1 is what? A unity. Now 2 multiplied by 8 will give us what? 16. What that means is that the value of x is equal to what? 16. And then you can test from your answer to be sure that what you have done is correct by returning back to the given equation which is what? x over what? 8 is equal to what? 2. Now we have solved for x to the what? 16. When I say 16 divided by 8, of course the result will be what? Equal to 2. This clearly explains that this is truly really what? An equation because what is on the left hand side is the same with what? What is on the right hand side. Let's look at second example. We have uh, x minus 7 over 2 is equal to what? 5. Just like I explained in while solving the first one, in this second example, we have on the left hand side, we have fraction. On the right hand side, we have what? Just a whole number. We can make this one to be 1 over 1 so that they both become what? Fractions. And then we cross multiply. Cross multiply. So that we have 1 times this one, then we have 1 bracket what? x minus 7 is equal to what? 5 times what? 2. Now we use this one to open up the bracket. In opening the bracket, because in the bracket we have a binomial. A binomial because we have two terms inside the bracket. What we do is, we use this value that is outside the bracket to multiply the individual word 
values inside the bracket so that we now have what? 1 times x, we have what? 1 times x, then this sign is negative, we have negative. Then 1 times what? 1 times 7 equal to what? 5 times 2, that will give us what? 10. Now if you multiply 1 times x, you have x, minus this times this, you have what? 7 equal to what? 10. Actually, what we are solving for is the value of x, not x minus 7. So at this point in time, we collect like this. What does it mean to collect like this? What it means to collect like this is that you do what you can, so much so that on the left hand side you have variables that are of the same type, and on the right hand side you have variables that are also what of the same type. Now collect like terms. Now we have just a single x, so we can decide to leave the x on the left hand side. Now equal to 10. Now on the left hand side of the equation we have negative 7, which we are going to take to the right hand side of the equation. And as soon as this negative 7 crosses to the right hand side of the equation, the sign changes to become what? Plus. So that we now have x is 17. Now if you come back to this given equation, if you put 17 here, it means that we are going to have 17 minus 7 all over 2. 17 minus 7 will give us what? 10. And 10 divided by 2 will give us what? 5, which is the same thing as this. So that means this is also very true. Now, an alternative way of solving this kind of equation is this. Alternatively, now we have x over 7. x minus 7 over 2 is equal to what? 5 over what? 1. If we don't want to go this way, we can do it another way by looking for what? The LCM of the denominators. Now, in this, in this case, the denominators are 2 and 1. So what is the LCM of 2 and 1? And the full meaning of LCM simply means lowest common word multiple. So the LCM of 2 and 1 is 2. Now, since we have identified the LCM to be equal to 2, the next step is we now use the LCM to multiply the individual word variables. So that we now have what? 2 multiplied by x minus 7 over what? 2. Equal to what? 2 multiplied by what? 5. Now, this 2 is at the numerator and this 2 is at what? The denominator. So they can easily what? Cancel out. So that we'll be left with what? x minus what? 7. Equal to what? 2 times this will have what? 10. Now that's brings us back to this level now. So at this point again, we can collect like that so that we now have x is equal to what? 10 plus what? 7. So that x is equal to what? Uh, 17. So these are the two ways that we can use uh, to solve what? Equations involving what? Fractions. Now, still under equations involving fraction, we can have fractions with unknown in the denominator. Now, example of that, we have 1 over x is equal to what? 1 over 5. Now, if you look at this one, it is still what? Equation involving fraction, but the denominator we have an unknown. And the first one we looked at, that one too is what? Equations involving fraction, but at the denominator we didn't have anything called what? Unknown. Now, x is called unknown because what? It is to be solved for. So when we have this kind of uh, problem, how do we go about it? Since on the left hand side we have just one fraction and on the right hand side too we have one fraction, we can simply do cross multiplication. So that when we cross multiply, we have 1 times 5 or 5 times 1 equal to what? 1 times what? X. Now 1 times 5 will give us what? 5. Equal to 1 times X will give us what? That means the value of X is equal to 5. And of course it is advisable that any time you are solving any equation, the unknown that you are solving for should always be on the left hand side of the equation. Therefore, simply say x is equal to what? 5. Now, there is an, an alternative way to go about this. We can say alternatively, One over x is equal to what? One over five. 
Now, here we can look for the LCM also. Now, what is the LCM of x and 5? The LCM will be what? The product of the two variables. That is what? 5x. So we say LCM is equal to what? 5 what? x. Now that we have identified that 5x is the LCM, the next thing is we now use the LCM to multiply the individual variables so that we have what? 5x multiplied by what? 1 over x equal to what? 5x multiplied by what? 1 over 5. Now, if you look at on both sides, the numerator and the denominator, they have something in common. Now, we can cancel out the common factor. Now, x and x here are common, and then 5 and 5 are also common. Then we'll deal with what, what is remaining, so that we have 5 multiplied by 1 equal to what? x multiplied by 1. 5 times 1, we have 5 equal to x times 1, we have x. Therefore, we can say x is equal to what? So, any of the two methods is what? Correct. Now, we can also have equations such that at the denominator we have a binomial. Equation with, equations with denominator or binomial, binomial as the word denominator. Dinomi, D, dinomi, nato. Now, example, let's say we have uh, 12 all over what? X minus 1 equal to what? 3. If you look at this one, and this one is completely different from the two types of equation that we have looked at. Why? At the denominator here, we have what? A binomial. Now, in this case, what do we do? We can make this one 2 over 1, and then we do what? We cross multiply. So there will be no need writing cross multiply again. So we cross multiply, we have 12 multiplied by 1 equal to what? 3, open bracket, what? x minus what? 1. And then we expand our bracket or we clear the bracket. 12 times 1, we have what? 12 equal to what? We expand this one, we have 3 times x to give us 3x, and then 3 times what? Minus 1 to give us what? Minus 3. Now we are looking for the value of x, and it is on the right hand side that we have what? x, alongside what? A negative what? Whole number. Now we can collect like this, such that we now have 12. Taking this negative 3 to the left hand side becomes what? Positive, so we have plus 3 equal to what? 3x. Now, if you add 3 to 12, we are going to have what? 15 equal to what? 3x. Now, what we are solving for is the value of what? x and not what? 3x. So, to get the value of x, we we'll divide both sides by what? The coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of an unknown? The coefficient of an unknown is the number that is attached to what? The unknown. So, we now say divide both sides. by what? 3, because 3 is attached to x. Therefore, we have what? 15 over 3 equal to what? 3x all over what? 3. Now, this 3 cancel this 3. How many times can 3 go in 15? It will go what? 5 times equal to what? x. Therefore, we say x is equal to what? 5. Now, that's all about the first uh, topic.